Hello everybody, this is Tim once again here for the <laughs> last movie in the original Halloween franchise. <laughs> Halloween Resurrection. And if I sound less enthusiastic in this review, that's not because uh, <clears throat> not because I'm bored with this character, but because I'm because this movie sucks. Okay, I'll just be honest. This this is a horrible movie. It is, it's atrocious. Uh, once again, VHS, collect VHS tapes. This film stars okay, let's let's get into this here. Let's get into the cast of this this masterpiece. Okay, this film stars fucking uh, <clears throat> Jamie Lee Curtis in basically a small role. Thomas Ian Nichols, Ryan Merman, uh, Busta. Okay, okay. That's how you say his name exactly. That's how you pronounce it. Busta motherfucking rhymes. So that's what I'm gonna call him for the movie. Motherfucking rhymes. Um, you get fucking um. To be honest, that's Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks. You get Tyra Banks in this movie. And that's pretty much uh, all the people that I recognize. A couple other actors I recognize. Well, they got one of the dweeb guys from American Pie. Uh, I don't mind American Pie. I actually like that movie. But uh, he was like the lesser character in American Pie. I think his name was Kevin in that film. Here I think it's Bill, maybe. Because uh, a lot of the teenagers are kind of like interchangeable and they don't really serve any other purpose besides just to get killed by Michael Myers. So most of the cast in here is just slasher fodder. Uh, which makes it mildly entertaining of a movie, a little bit more than H2O, because you get Michael Myers hacking and slashing more in this film, uh, and everybody, uh, for a while longer, so it makes it a little bit more entertaining, because he's killing more people, but at the same time, this film is, this film, what started with selling out with H2O, is complete here, it's complete, <laughs> uh, H2O was, what, was the sellout film, this film is even more of a sellout film, Tyra Banks and Busta Rhymes are in this movie. I don't have a problem with musicians or anybody who wants to play in a movie who can act actually in a movie. When they're only in there for name value and that's it and serve no purpose other than that, um, then I don't like it. That's bullshit. <laughs> but um, and it's just, it is disgraceful that they just put these people in here. It's like with the last movie, they were trying to force in like Michael Myers is hip. He's fucking hip, I tell you. And in this movie, they're trying to do it even more so. Like, check it out. We got Bussa Rhymes. I mean, Bussa motherfucking Rhymes here. <laughs> and Tyra Banks. Oh, we hip. Myers is hip, baby. And I'm like, come on. Once again, I don't want this shit. Stop trying to hip Michael Myers up. Why try to hip the character up? This is a character that the fans have supported who grew up with the character, who have watched the character all this time. Why try to hip him up for like a... More fucking like for a more mainstream audience. That's what they're trying to do. That's why I don't like it. They're trying to move Michael Myers into mainstream, and uh, they do it. He's sold out here. It's over. The character is uh, drained of any soul that he's just had. It's all gone. But uh, to jump into the movie here, you got Jamie Lee Curtis at the beginning. Uh, I know everyone has seen this movie already. Who's a Halloween fan or probably a horror fan in general. Oh, I will never forget the movie for this. This right here, automatically. This is the only part in the film that feels like a Halloween film at all. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis at the beginning in an, in an asylum. And to be honest, if the whole movie would have took place here with him trying to kill Jamie Lee Curtis, I would have liked it better than the entire film. But uh, Michael Myers never got his head chopped off at the end of the last one. Jamie Lee Curtis actually just chopped off an imposter's head. He took a paramedic, crushed his vocal cords, and somehow that paramedic was able to survive all these uh, superhuman things that uh, that Michael Myers could only survive, but somehow he survived them and survived getting pinned by the fucking van. And also, he didn't have the sense to just take his take the mask off. So I'm like, what? Uh, that's so disrespectful to the last movie. That that right there alone makes this movie just trash. Just makes it trash. Garbage. <laughs> say what you want about the Rob Zombie films, which they're not anything amazing either, but uh, they're miles better than this film. They are. This film is just garbage. It's just disrespectful garbage. Um, you get that, which automatically makes this movie trash. It just automatically does it. Um, so Michael Myers is still alive. He never died. Which the movie's called Halloween fucking Resurrection. Why not just resurrect him? Hell, bring him back from the dead. Michael Myers has always had... Slight, uh, it's always been a slight supernatural entity, but never like uh, so supernatural that I uh, that he probably couldn't survive like getting blown up or having his head chopped off or something like that. But if you're gonna go with a title like Halloween Resurrection, just go all out. Fuck it, make him completely supernatural. Have him come back from the dead. 
Um, I mean, why not? At this point, this is the eighth movie in the series. I mean, do something different. Uh, try to freshen it up, but not in a way where you're just trying to make it mainstream for what you consider the hip audience. <laughs> but um, anyway, <clears throat> so he comes there to the asylum. He kills one guard. He gets the arm bar to lift shit again. He comes down behind one of the, one of the guards at the asylum. Uh, slits his throat. Decent death here. Uh, like I said, this is the beginning of this film. Is the only part that feels like a Halloween film. He slits his throat. The other guard uh, is was killed off camera. Uh, I believe his head was chopped off. Of course, you don't see it. He comes after Jamie Lee Curtis, breaks into her cell, knocks through the fucking door, which is mildly entertaining. Jamie Lee Curtis surprises him, knocks him in the back of the head, knocks him out. you think you'd learn by now <laughs> to always check the room when he's going up against Curtis, but I guess not. <laughs> so he takes off after Jamie Lee Curtis. They make it to the roof. She's got a trap set for him. Once again, she owns Michael Myers pretty much with his duel. She gets hangs, hangs him upside down, and then she falls for the dumbest ass shit here. <coughs> We're fucking... She's afraid she's going to make another mistake and chop another wrong person's head off. And already, that right there just... Oh, nullifies my brain. That right there already just makes me hate the movie even more. And she's got him, like, fucking all the way at the top of the roof, like, hung upside down, and she drops him. Uh, Michael Myers has always been, like, a semi-supernatural character, so you would, you get the idea that if he gets anything too damaging done to him, that he would die from it, so he might actually die from, uh, from this fall, because it's pretty high up, but, um, no, instead, she goes over there and thinks that she wants to check and make sure it's Michael Myers, uh, but how is she gonna know it's him anyway, even if she takes off his mask, she hasn't seen him in years, so how's she gonna know what his face looks like anyway, <laughs> but whatever, um, Oh, well, I guess because that scene from the original film where his mask came off for a brief second, uh, I guess she could know by that, I guess. But uh, anyway, so she goes over to take off his mask, and uh, what do you know, it's a trick. He manages to grab a hold of her, the rope snaps, and uh, he's got a hold of it with his hand, and he fucking stabs her in the back, and then Q, Jamie Lee Curtis is dead, and she's like, I'll see you in hell, because she views herself as like a horrible person, because she cut off uh, uh, the wrong guy's head. Even though it wasn't her fault. And she just drops down and fucking falls to the ground. And I'm like, okay, you're giving her a tragic ending. Uh, that would be good if we didn't already... That would be maybe decent in a better movie if we didn't already have the much better ending for the character in Halloween H2O. And not to mention, after what this character's been through, the same thing with Jamie. It just feels disrespectful to kill him off like this. If, the, if Jamie Lee Curtis had been in the entire film and they'd, uh, with a better cast... <laughs> and a better story, uh, and she had died somewhere near the end, maybe, I would have forgave it, and even though Jamie Lee Curtis dies, the film can still, it can still salvage itself, or try, uh, I mean, if it had a better cast, or a better main character, and a better story after this, uh, incident, but no, it doesn't, instead, Michael Myers uh, leaves and gives the bloody knife that he used to kill everybody with there to this, uh, stupid mental patient guy who, Talks about serial killers all the time, I guess, to frame him for the murders. And then Michael Myers turns around and leaves. And that's it. Um, <clears throat> this film is fucking horrible. <laughs> it has no redeeming value. Tyra Banks is in this film for name value only. There's nothing to this movie, uh, really. You get a, a cast of characters. You got, I believe, you got an actor in here who plays the character Rudy. He talks about food all the time. I actually like that. I actually like that character. He's mildly amusing. We got a musician guy in here. He's funny. He keeps trying to fuck this red haired girl. He's mildly amusing. I enjoy him. And then we get the main character, which is a girl named Sarah, who's the worst lead in this entire franchise that's ever been in this franchise. Um, but uh, she's horrible. She's atrocious. She has a friend named Jen. Uh, uh well, Jennifer, who looks like uh, a goofier version of Brittany Murphy. But uh, so automatically right there, the characters aren't worth a shit. And they're just teenage cannon fodder. And they're only in the movie just because they were like done a few films around the time. So it's like cast the, you know, the hip new young actors from the mainstream audience. So it's like, oh, come on. At the same time, though, this movie is a has a little bit, uh, has some things going for it that makes it slightly better than H2O in some categories. The film feels more like a Halloween film. Uh, like the setting of it feels more like Halloween and you get pumpkins and stuff like lit up and it makes it feel more like Halloween which I enjoy. It feels slightly more like a Halloween film than H2O did. Because <coughs> H2O felt more like an episode of Dawson's Creek. Sorry once again about the fucking coffin. I despise it. But this uh, I don't. This really ain't my allergies because I am over them. I mean, 
I am over them completely now. That really wasn't my allergies that made me cough. That was this movie because it's just so shitty. But anyway, um, I take in too much shittiness. I gotta exhale. <laughs> but anyway, back to this movie here. Um, this piece of shit. Um, so basically, the idea of the movie is that these people all get like an invitation, like they win an invitation to explore Michael Myers' house, hosted by Busta Motherfucking Rhymes and uh, Tyro Skanks. <laughs> uh, so uh, they get to go explore Michael Myers' house. Now that's an interesting idea to explore Michael Myers' house like that. I mean, for the eighth movie, you think that maybe we'll learn something. You know, we'll learn something new about Michael Myers. Maybe they'll find some stuff in the house that's interesting that might explain a little bit about Michael Myers more. You know, like the way his psyche works and stuff. But no, you don't get shit. There's nothing here. Everything's already everything's rigged and set up by busted motherfucking rhymes. So there's really nothing. There's nothing interesting about this story. It doesn't do anything with itself. Instead, they're doing it live, broadcast on the internet with cameras and stuff on all over. Wearing, they're wearing cameras and shit. So it's like trying to make Michael Myers hip once again with the internet stuff. And I'm like, eh, okay. As long as they don't, I don't mind movies where they try new things like the internet and stuff like that. But when it gets to the point where they're just uh, putting in, uh, characters, older characters on the internet and bringing them into like the cyber age and digital age just because they want to hip them up and they overdo it like they do in this film. Like, yeah. Uh, she has a friend online who she talks to, and later on in the movie, she's exploring the house. Or she's trying to get away from Michael Myers, and he's fucking talking to her on the internet, telling her where to go and where to run to. And I'm like, that's a little bit, that's too much for me right there. That's, that's my broken point. But, uh, I hate this film. I hate it as well. This is a horrible film. And, uh, like I've said in the last video, I would never watch this film if it wasn't for this review. Even though I own it, but I'm a completist, so what can I say? Um, so they go there, they're exploring the house, uh. The character Rudy, who talks about food all the time, he's like, this. he's talking about this guy who killed people. He's like, uh, he only killed people because he had a poor diet or something like that. And he's like, uh, Hitler was a vegetarian, so that he's malnourished, so that explains why he was crazy. So I thought stuff like that was funny. I like this guy. Then I like this actor. He's funny. Not all these actors are bad or anything like that. I mean, they're mildly amusing. In some ways, the cast is better here than it was in H2O. But uh, it's just that... It's just that they don't mount to anything, and it's like they're, and then it's just that they're only casted for name value. You got the guy from American Pie who keeps trying to fuck the Jennifer character, who's the, the blonde haired girl in the movie, the goofy version of Brittany Murphy, and he gets her to like, almost gets her to like flash the camera. He's like trying to flirt with her and telling her if she wants to launch her career on the internet to flash the camera, and so she gets ready to like give a boob shot, but it's like denied. You don't get to see anything at the last minute, so <laughs> useless. <laughs> but anyway. So, he gets killed, uh, he, uh, fucking Michael Myers busts through a window and stabs him on top of the, his skull with a knife, which is an entertaining death scene. Now, this film has more death scenes than, the, than H2O, so that makes it slightly more entertaining until you get to the third act. Um, so, uh, Dweeb from American Pie, uh, I can just picture Michael Myers when he stabs him in the head. Fuck you, American Pie, bam! <laughs> but anyway, that just, that's funny to me. And, uh, you got the musician guy in here who keeps trying to fuck this red hair girl. And he he almost fucks her, really. <laughs> but these props that bust a motherfucker uh, has uh, hid in the house, fall down on top of him, and uh, that interrupts their sex. You get to see a little bit of side boob here, uh, slightly entertaining. <laughs> but um, she uh, fucking she goes into this hole where it's like where Michael Myers. Michael Myers has been living underneath his house for since the second movie so it's like so you're canceling out every one of the other films to just give me the satisfaction that michael myers has been living under his house for all these years eating dead rats because he's eating dead rats there so michael myers has been eating rats and killing them and eating them <laughs> so i'm like okay whoa whoa okay whoa <laughs> he likes to eat rats uh, whatever <laughs> but uh, anyway he's got like a picture of a Laurie strode there on a fucking uh pillow and he's got it like a I believe he's got a doll there with a little darts in its eyes or something like that. So I'm like, finally we get a little bit of information on Michael Myers' brain, how it works, but not enough to where it's satisfying. <laughs> but uh, I would like more explanation, more exploration of that. Uh, not so much like telling everything about Michael Myers or anything like that, but you can still give hints to like how he thinks and stuff. But uh, anyway, so she's down there, real Michael Myers shows up <laughs> at the house, crashes the party. He fucking takes her and stabs her like, Takes her, and there's this gate behind her, and he pushes her on this jagged piece, and it goes straight through her. Mildly entertaining death scene. Like I said, the death scenes, there's more in this film, so it's slightly more entertaining than H2O for a while, which H2O is just dull as shit until the ending. 
So, uh, she gets stabbed on that, and then Michael Myers fucking is coming after the, well, you get Busta Rhymes, oh, this scene, oh, before I forget, you get Busta Rhymes dressed up as Michael Myers in the house. Oh, at the beginning of the film, before I get to this one, uh, Michael Myers kills a guy with a tripod by stabbing him through the throat right here. And I thought that was mildly entertaining, and it's a reference to the film Peeping Tom, I believe. But, uh, um, that was a decent death scene. That was enjoyable. Like I said, the death scenes in this film were better than they were in H2O. And there's more of them, so it's, this movie's more entertaining for the first and maybe uh, second act than H2O. But the story in H2O is better and more respectable than the story here. And H2O ends up, H2O is a sellout film, but it ends up being a more respectable sellout than this film, which is just a complete uh, soul-drained of franchise sellout film. But anyway, so uh, fucking Tyra Banks gets killed off camera, so she doesn't even amount to nothing, so you don't get to see anything. So she's useless only in there for name value. So back to uh, what I was talking about in Bustin' Rhymes, he dressed up as Michael Myers, and the real Michael Myers shows up. Bustin' Rhymes turns around, he's like, uh, he thinks it's he thinks it's his friend, and he tell this scene is mildly amusing. I mean, it is funny, but it winds up just being too much of a joke and taking me out of the movie. He busts around, looks at him, he's like, "What the fuck you doing, dressed up as Michael Myers? I'm Michael Myers. You dressed the wee kids come around here and see us dressed up in the same shit. You're gonna ruin the whole effect. What the fuck is wrong with you? You he starts pecking Michael Myers inside the head. Your shit ain't walking up in there, something. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Anyway, and he tells him, uh. Get the fuck out of here. Go back in the garage. Help Tyra Banks. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he turns around and leaves. And I'm like, alright. And then I was mildly amused by it at that point. And then what killed me for it? What killed it for me is when you go back to Busta Rhymes. He's dressed up as Michael Myers. Got his arms crossed. And he goes, man, what's somebody got to do to get a little decent help in this motherfucker? <laughs> that killed it for me. I couldn't take it after that. But <laughs> anyway... Plus, it's just a joke. It kind of treats the, char the character as a little bit of a silly joke. And that's a little bit too much for me, comedy-wise. But anyway, <clears throat> back to this uh, fucking humongous double-decker shit sandwicher. <laughs> um, fucking, you get Sarah in the movie who, like, some reason hallucinates Michael Myers a couple times. Or one time, for some reason. It never explains why at all. It's just there because it's there. So there's no explanation for it. So why is she hallucinating Michael Myers? She's not related to Michael Myers. So what the fuck's the point? So that's fucking useless. So that makes no sense for the movie. And uh, <laughs> on top of that, you get fucking... Um, you get the girl, Jennifer, who's the blonde-haired girl. Uh, she plays a prank on him or whatever. And it's like... Uh, you, you know it's a prank, so it's just time kids just padding, so it's annoying. And then after that, you get Buster Rhymes pretending to be Michael Myers, and the kids, uh, he scares Sarah and the, the other, the musician guy and the fucking uh, Rudy, they get together and take him down, whoop his ass, <laughs> and he takes his mask off and tells him to turn off the cameras. So it's like another false scare, okay, mildly amusing here, I guess. <laughs> We're still just padding. And then you, uh, he decides to leave and go scare some shit out of people. And uh, Rudy and uh, Sarah are like, we have artistic integrity. We didn't sign up just to find fake shit. We, we want to do something real for people. I'm like, okay, seriously, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, fucking uh, the girl, Jennifer, the blonde-haired girl, Michael Myers shows up. Well, she finds uh, the American Dweeb's body, and she uh, she's standing there, she screams, and then fucking Michael Myers shows up and slices her head completely off with a butcher knife, which is an entertaining death scene. Like I said, the death scenes and stuff in this film are entertaining. He slices her head off with a butcher knife, which was cool, and then that's when the other characters know that this really is Michael Myers, we gotta get the fuck out of here. So they try to get out of here, and then the musician guy swings and hits Michael Myers with a camera. Uh, but it doesn't do anything, of course, because he's Michael Myers. And then, uh, the, uh, Rudy is telling the, and telling him to get the fuck out of there, but he just stands there. And then Michael Myers grabs him by the head and does a, a little mini skull crusher with his eye, makes his eyes bleed and shit. Decent, uh, decent effects. You see the blood, like, pouring down out of his eyes like that. It's, it's a pretty decent scene. The effect is fine. And you hear the skull, like, crush. But at the same time, I'm thinking, why didn't that motherfucker just run? Why'd he just stand there? But anyway, um... So he's dead, and then uh, he gets ready to kill Sarah, but uh, Rudy draws him off, and Rudy draw throws pepper in Michael Myers' eye, and I'm like, Michael Myers just like he's running back like Ooh, like that because he's been blinded by little paprika or whatever, and I'm like, okay, anyway, <laughs> that kind of de demeans the character and makes him a little bit too weak for me. He just gets blinded by pepper and he can't take anything, but whatever. 
And so he's swinging, uh, he, like, he gets fu two fucking butcher knives, starts swinging him at Michael Myers. And but Michael Myers manages to get a hold of him and lifts him up to a door and fucking rams him straight through him. He's got him pinned on the door. Then goes to the drawer and gets out this massive ass butcher knife and stabs it in him and pins him to the wall with three butcher knives. Now that's a cool scene. That That is a cool death scene. But once again, all the characters left, all the good characters are dead. All the characters left are the characters I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> um... Oh, the girl, the Sarah, the girl that plays Sarah is awful. She's atrocious. She's so fucking horrible. And she's talking to this guy online who's Decker. He's like this high school boy. He's got a crush on her. Um, and he helps her, like, online by telling her, oh, like, via internet, how to get out of the house and where Michael Myers is and shit. And that's too much for me. That's too much of, like, an internet advertisement out there for me. But, um, anyway, uh, then the actual authentic, uh, bust a motherfuck shows up. <laughs> Not dressed as Michael Myers. So the authentic Michael Myers. Well, I mean to say that the authentic Michael Myers is chasing after the bust of motherfucking rhymes shows up. So it's like you got motherfuck there. And then you got uh, Michael Myers. Then you get the worst, most disgraceful scene for a horror major franchise character I've ever seen. I've ever seen. You get my, you get Busta Rhymes kicking Michael Myers' ass. Doing over the top silly comedic kung fu. Silly comedic kung fu. I don't mind people who can fight in horror movies and uh, can get the upper hand on the horror bad guy, you know, by their skill or whatever. But when you do it as a joke and he, the character gets defeated, like as a joke, the major character does, then uh, it just comes off as fucking disrespectful and stupid and atrocious. Like, he, he grabs Buster Rhymes, slings him out of the way, and Buster Rhymes gets up and like, so you want to be on Danger Tainment? Let's see what you got. He goes, why? And he jumps up and does a fucking kick, knocks him in the face. It's so fucking stupid. And uh, and then he kicks him and knocks him out the fucking window. And Michael Myers gets hung. So you're like, damn, Buster Rhymes just, uh, but motherfucker just whooped uh, Michael Myers' ass. <laughs> and in such a stupid way. So fucking comedic and ridiculously played to be silly. LL Cool J in the last movie was there just for comic relief and name value. But he, LL Cool J is a better actor than Buster Rhymes. And, uh,. <clears throat> I like, I don't mind, I don't mind, like, musicians and stuff, like I've said, acting, as long as they're not in there just for name value. I like LL Cool J and Deep Blue Sea, but, uh, and in that, the, but in Halloween H2O, he's only there for no reason whatsoever, other than the name value. But he is at least a better actor than Buster Rhymes, and Buster Rhymes doing Kung Fu, I would rather have him had a small role like LL Cool J than to be disrespectful like this to the character of Michael Myers, and just to the film in general by making him a fucking joke of a character, making motherfucker a joke. <laughs> And Michael Myers is a joke in the process. But anyway, so Michael Myers is hung. He ends up cutting the rope, makes it back in, stabs Buster Rhymes in the shoulder, and I'm like, yes, yes! Sorry about that, the fucking computer fail. <laughs> I was getting too excited, my excitement caused it to fall over. But anyway, I'm like, yes, fucking, hey, kill us, kill him, fucking kill him. And then, of course, motherfucker, don't go down like that. But, uh, <laughs> So uh, he chases after Sarah. Sarah manages to make it into the fucking uh, garage outside. Uh, Michael Myers is making it out there, and you get a horrible fucking acting scene right here by the girl that plays Sarah. It's atrocious. She fucking jerks out a chainsaw, and she's like, "This is for everybody. This is for all of them that you killed." And that's exactly the way she sounds, and it's so fucking atrocious and horrible acting that it just makes me want to vomit. At this point, I'm I'm gagging. I'm fucking gagging, and I'm reaching for some uh, fucking cyanide capsules. This is like this has got me almost as fucked up in the, the head as Texas Chainsaw Massacre: Next Generation did, where I'm reaching for some drugs to kill me. Uh, even though uh, <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D was worse than that film, Next Generation is uh, more disrespectful. But uh, I mean, to the material, but uh, 3D is more just like so underwritten and so done that there's no life to the film at all. So that makes it worse inadvertently. But Next Generation is harder to sit through because it's more disrespectful to the material. Uh, but anyway, this film right here goes in that same category. It's more disrespectful to the material. Uh, it doesn't have the funniness of Matthew McConaughey from Next Generation to make it slightly entertaining. So it just comes off as bad disrespectfulness. And uh, it's just so fucking atrocious seeing Buster Rhymes do Kung Fu. And this girl's acting is fucking horrible. She manages to get the best of uh, Michael Myers, cutting him with a chainsaw, then the chainsaw quits, of course. And then uh, Michael Myers gets ready to kill her, and then motherfucker shows up, and you get the... <laughs> uh, you get the fucking 
cheesiest, silliest one line one liner making trying to make Buster Rhymes an action comedic hero for Halloween I've mainstream audience I've ever heard in my life. Where he looks and he goes looks at Michael Myers after he, he fucking breaks the door and goes Michael Myers is like surprised to see him and but some motherfucker looks at him and goes, Trick or treat, motherfucker and I'm like, Oh gosh, oh I'm dead after this. I'm dead. I can't take any more. I'm dead. But then they get into a fight and he's fucking trolling a stick around. He's like, why? <laughs> fucking, hi ya! Hitting him with the stick in the face and shit. Then Michael Myers knocks him against the wall. And this is how Michael Myers is defeated in this film. I mean, think about this. This is how Michael Myers is defeated in this film. First film, Michael Myers falls off the balcony after getting shot in a badass way by Dr. Loomis. Second film, he gets blowed up. Third film, don't count. Fourth film, he gets shot all to hell by multiple people. The fifth film, he gets beat with a board uh, when uh, after he's been shot with multiple tranquilizer darts. In the sixth film, he fucking gets his brain split, his beat to death with a lead pipe. And then uh, uh, seventh film, he gets his head chopped off, or at least he should have. <laughs> and then uh, after he gets the shit beat out of him by Laura Strode. And this film, this film, okay, think about this. This is the final film, the original franchise. This is how this character goes out. This is how he goes out. Buster Rhymes takes an electrical cable, shocks him in the dick, and that takes him down. Oh, oh God! I can't, I can't handle it. After that, almost that makes me so mad. It makes me want to break this VHS copy in half. I mean, literally, it does just make me want to snap it, almost just like that, because that makes me so angry. And so Buster, Buster Rhymes defeats him, and then he says another one-liner, "Happy fucking Halloween." Uh, oh, excuse me, the motherfucker says, "Happy fucking Halloween." <laughs> so he takes Sarah, saves her. They make it out of there. And then fucking. Uh, they take Michael Myers' body to the morgue, and you're thinking, please don't end this on a silly, uh, cliche ending of Michael Myers still being alive. Please. Please. So, not only does you get my Buster Rhymes kicking Michael Myers' ass and killing him, but with a dick shock, you get a cliche ending of Michael Myers still alive. Uh, I guess they might have actually thought they could get a sequel to this movie, and I'm so glad they didn't. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> they take him to the morgue, and, the, uh, and she's fucking opening up his, uh, she unzips the bag and he just opens his eyes and it's like, ah, end of movie. You hear a scream and it's the end of the movie. <laughs> I'm like, okay, enough. The franchise is dead. I get it. The franchise is a joke now. It's over. It's went mainstream and became a lifeless uh, Oprah. Uh, I mean, a lifeless uh, fucking Tyra Banks TV show joke. <laughs> so it's dead. The character's dead. He wasn't. He doesn't die in this final film. Of the franchise, which H2O is really the final film. Since this is the last one made, he ends on a joke and doesn't even die. And I hate that when they end the character on a joke with Bust Around and Dick shocking him and <laughs> uh, and with a stupid, just cliche ending of him being still alive. It's ridiculous. And it's a joke for the franchise to end this way. Uh, even though it really ends with H2O. <laughs> but um, it's a horrible film. I'm actually, I would rather they not made any more films after this, or if they had to make a sequel. At least do something respectful. If they they could make a sequel to this movie, it could have been possible, but they would have had to have completely changed tone and changed everything, which I would have liked. <laughs> they would have had to have made, uh, came up with a terrific story to make up for this movie. Since Sam Lee Curtis is dead, it would have been almost impossible, other than bringing in like the son of Donald Pleasance's character or something like that. There's really nothing they could do to salvage this franchise because all the best characters are dead. Donald Pleasance is dead. Uh, they can't bring him back from the dead in real life, so he ain't going to be making any more appearances. <laughs> Bringing in his son would seem like a little much, like character-wise. Or they were going to do something like that in the early idea. But uh, that would be at least better than this film, and I would root for him much more than I would anybody in this film. Also in this film, he kills Laurie Strode, right? So Michael Myers makes it his goal to kill off anybody he's related to. So why doesn't he fucking go after Laurie Strode's son, Josh Hartnett? That would be the most logical idea is him for go after Josh Hartnett. But no, you don't get that in the film at all, so... It's a story hole, complete story hole. Instead, he just goes home and eats some dead rats. So I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> all said and done, this is a horrible film. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing the Rob Zombie remake again, just to wash the taste of this film out of my mouth. Because regardless of what you think about that film, it's much better than this film. Oh, rating-wise for this film, zero. This is zero. This is a zero-star film because it just treats the character as such a disrespectful joke. That's not even entertaining. It's just a joke. And the way the character is defeated is just a disrespectful joke. So this film gets a zero out of a possible four. I think this may be the first zero I've given a movie uh, that I've reviewed, but this deserves it. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker. Uh, uh, you've earned that zero, motherfucker. I tell you, you've earned that zero. <laughs> but 
I'll see you guys again with uh, the review for the, well, the Rob Zombie Halloween franchise with his Halloween 1 and, of course, his Halloween 2. I'll wrap these films up. And then uh, I was going to move on to the Nightmare on Elm Street films, but I think I'll do the Friday the 13th next just because they're, well, I just want to do them. I think I might have mentioned in other in another video that I was going to do them next instead of a Nightmare on Elm Street, but in case I haven't, I'm going to do them next instead of a Nightmare on Elm Street because they're, the franchise is so much longer that I just want to get to those films you know, as quick as I can. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with a review for Rob Zombie's Halloween. Avoid this film like a plague. Horror fans, beware. Michael Myers fans, definitely beware. Uh, fucking fans of Buster Rhymes music, beware, because he, the way his character is portrayed is ridiculous in this movie. I don't even, I don't like Buster Rhymes music, but I've really, I've never listened to him that much. But uh, judging from the way he is in this film, it almost makes me never want to listen to him. <laughs> and I never liked Tyra Banks ever. I've never cared about Tyra Banks whatsoever. But uh. Yeah, this film's horrible, it's atrocious, it gets a zero out of a possible four, and avoid it at all costs. <laughs> like a uh, like a chick with a HIV, avoid it at all costs. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you guys again with the, uh, the next Halloween film, Rob Zombie's Halloween.